My name is Karen O'Brien, and I'm a professor of human geography at the University of Oslo in Norway. I'm one of the lead authors on the IPCC Working Group 2 report on climate change impacts, vulnerability, and adaptation. This report focuses on what climate change means for both ecology and society, and it considers the potential consequences of different scenarios of climate change. It discusses how we can adapt to some of the impacts of climate change and some of the barriers and limits to adaptation to others. In short, it covers why we should be concerned about climate change and also what we can do about it. My role in the report has been as a lead author on um, the chapter on climate resilient pathways, adaptation, mitigation, and sustainable development. I've also contributed to the summary for policymakers, which in a nutshell um, presents the key findings to governments of the world. Perhaps the most important thing that the report um, reveals is that we have a, currently a choice to make about the future. The research on climate change shows that changes will happen in the next decade regardless of what we do um, with um, climate change mitigation. This is in part because greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide remain in the atmosphere for a long time. This means actually that today's emissions are influencing the climate um, decades from now in the future rather than only today. But it also means that we have a unique opportunity now to influence the climate of the future um, and what we'll experience. So the actions that we do today will influence whether we experience a warmer world in the future or a much, much warmer world. Unfortunately, there's a lot that we can do to influence the um, future outcomes. There are hundreds of solutions to climate change um, mitigation and many ways to adapt to climate variability and change. This is about the um, amount and type of energy that we use, um, what we build with it and construct with, what we consume, how we share risk, and perhaps most of all, it's about the way that we work together to address complex issues. Most of the actions that we take will actually have benefits on other areas as, um, as well. For example, reducing air pollution can improve air quality and health in um, cities such as Beijing. The most effective solutions to climate change call for collaboration within and across groups, and it's here where individuals have a big role to play. While one can reduce one's own um, environmental impact by, for example, bicycling or recycling, um, the most effective responses to climate change will be the ones that address the systemic causes and impacts. This means looking at and understanding how systems um, are currently organized. And by systems, I mean transportation systems, energy systems, education systems, or even political systems. And it means designing and implementing solutions that affect these systemic causes. This means often that we'd be working within one's own sector or industry or school system or even political party um, to look at how we can change the goals and the incentives and the ways that we address um, uh, um, climate change. The most immediate thing that most individuals can do to scale up the responses to climate change is to actually start a conversation with family, friends, neighbors, and politicians about climate change and what to do about it. And although we will not all agree on what to do about climate change, at least we'd be starting the right type of conversation.